Welcome to a, another edition. Um, today we're going to be having a look at the different ways watercolour pencils react to your notebook. Now, there are a number of different notebooks and there's a number of different watercolour pencils. We're going to be looking at four particular brands of watercolour pencils and we're going to be going through a couple of notebooks as well. Obviously, we'll be using the Archer and Olive notebooks as well as the Happy Planner, also Lerstrom and a number of others that are really popular at the moment. The reason I wanted to go through this is because sometimes we get so hung up on the beautiful art that is in these amazing notebooks that we forget that there's actually a couple of different ways that people make this happen. There could be reasons uh, they're using a thicker paper, they're using less water. There's a variety of reasons that this is going to work really well for some people and for some people not. So I thought, what better way to go through step by step just some of the techniques and tools and also the different types of watercolor pencils that there are on the market. Some have more pigment in, some have got less pigment in, some are really bright, some are not so bright, and some work really well with a lot of water or some work well with less water. So we're going to go through that whole process and I'm gonna show you um, also some different types of paper and how they respond in comparison to watercolour paper itself. Obviously our notebooks are not made of watercolour paper and to show you that difference we're going to look at some of the bleeding and if there's a bit of ghosting as well and how much water it actually takes to blend these watercolour pencils. Today is the first day I'm trying my new background. I'm super excited. So let's get started with our notebooks that we're having a look at today. We're first gonna start with Archer and Olive. Then we're gonna move on to Tumba Tree Midri. We're gonna have a look at the scribbles that matter, the dingbats, obviously our Lustrum, and then finally our Happy Planner notes. Each one has different levels or different types of paper. Let's get started with our Archer and Olive. All right, so let's start right at the bottom. We have got our four different types of watercolor pencils that we're gonna be testing today. We've got the Primer Marketing watercolor pencils, we've got Faber-Castell, we've got Derwent, and we've got um, Cheapies from Typo. What I love about the Primer colors is that they come in so many varieties. The Faber-Castell is really affordable and you can find those anywhere. The Derwents are a little bit more expensive, but they're really high pigment and then the really cheap ones from Typo. It says watercolor like no other. So we're going to start with those and we're going to start with our Archer and Olive notebook. We're going to turn to a blank piece of paper and we're going to draw in just four splotches from the four different types of uh, pencils. Let's get started. All right, here we're starting with the Typo watercolor, then on to the primer marketing. You can see already that the pigment is really bright and it almost rubs off on the page. There's so much of it. Duent is very similar. You can see that I'm not pressing too hard, but I'm pressing enough for the pigment to come out. And then finally, the Faber-Castell. Um, again, you can see quite a lot of pigment and it is quite bright. Once we add a little bit of water, the Typo pencil is a little bit tricky to blend. It doesn't blend as nicely as I would assume. Um, it does take a little bit of time to get the color moving around. With the primer marketing, it's really quick and easy. It's literally add the water and it starts blending. With the Derwent, it's very similar to the primer marketing watercolor pencils. You can see the pigment starts moving around on the paper very quickly. I'm not using a lot of water here. You can see it's wet, but it's not saturated. We're using just enough water to be able to blend those colors. This is the Archer and Olive 120 GSM notebook uh, watercolor paper. So this is dedicated to watercolor. So let's see how these watercolor pencils act on the watercolor paper. 
Now you'll see we've gone through typo, uh, the primer marketing, the duend, and then finally the Faber Castell. Using the water, again, not a lot of water, just enough water to blend it. The typo pencils are very difficult to blend. The primer marking, primer marketing colors are really easy and blend beautifully. They have such a vibrant color as well. So far, these are in the running for best pencils to use. The Duent takes a little bit of a struggle to blend, but once you add a little bit of extra water, it does blend really, lovely, really beautifully. The Faber-Castell also blends lovely on the watercolor paper, but it struggles a little bit with the notebook paper. There's no bleeding and you can see that the limited amount of water used here uh, doesn't create any piling on the paper or pilling. Here we're going to use the Tumbery Metri and this is 120 GSM paper. I really like this notebook and we're going to start off here with the Faber-Castell onto the Derwent, into the Primer Marketing and then finally the Typo. We're going to use, again, only a small amount of water. We don't need a lot of water when we're blending the pencils because they come usually as high pigmented um, products. So you don't need too much water. Here you can see the Faber-Castell blends beautifully. I think it's mainly because the paper is coated. The Duent struggles a little bit and I'm not sure why it struggles a little bit, but once you've added a little bit more water, it blends beautifully. Again, the primer marketing just blends right onto the page like it was meant to be there. And the typo really struggles to blend beautifully, leaving those stripes of being drawn on. Um, what I struggle with a little bit on this page is that they crinkle once they dry. Not ideal if you're going to be using a lot of heavy water or watercolor. On to my scribbles that matter, however. Now, this is really interesting because they've got 160 GSM paper. And I'd like to say that I used to love their paper and now I'm kind of on the fence about it. It just feels like a cheap version of the Archer and Olive and I don't really love that. So again, we're using the Faber-Castell, the Derwent, the Typo Pencil, and then finally the uh, Primer Marketing. Again, we're just using a little bit of water. We're not using heaps of water. And you can see that the response here with the um, primer marketing has been consistent across the board. But here with the typo, it's really not blending at all. And with the Duent, it almost feels like the paper is absorbing all of the water rather than helping it blend the color. Here, the Faber-Castell blended really well, and I'm really impressed by that. Give it a little bit of a dry, and you can see that the paper actually hasn't handled it as well as the Archer and Olive. It's kind of bleeding a little bit through, and there's a lot of crinkling on the paper, which was not what we saw on the Archer and Olive. Now, let's head into our Dingbats. Now, Dingbats for me is not one of my favorite notebooks. I don't like the yellow paper, and it's only 100 GSM. The pages are perforated, so you can rip them up, which is pretty cool. Now, we've started with the Faber-Castell, the Primer marking, Marketing, the Derwent, and finally, the Typo. Now, we're going to, again, use only a small amount of water, blend them together. The Faber-Castell really seems to struggle a little bit. The Derwent, on the other hand, is not loving this paper at all. The Primer Marketing is responding as it has on all the other pages where it blends beautifully. And finally, the Typo Pencil is not going very well at all. It really hasn't featured well across any of the notebooks we've tried. Once we give it a bit of a dry, we can see that the paper is really crumpled and there's quite a lot of kind of shadowing and um, ghosting coming through. Okay, on to our Lerstrom LT90. Now again, this is not one of my favorite notebooks. The low GSM paper really annoys me. I don't like the creamy color of the paper. I do like the coating, but the ghosting and the bleeding is just too much for me to handle. So I use this notebook mainly as a scrap notebook. Again, we've used the same pencils we've used all the way through this process. And the Faber-Castell really blends beautifully on this particular paper. Again, as expected, the Primer Marketing watercolor pencils blend beautifully 
beautifully. The Typo pencil really takes a lot of water and just stays as written kind of pencil drawings, which I don't love. And the Derwent blends beautifully as well. I think it's because of the, the coated paper, but you can see there's quite a lot of bleed through on the other side of the paper, which I'm, I'm not loving. And there's also a lot of ghosting. You can see that the paper has crumpled quite a bit once it's dried. Don't love any of that. On to our last contender and we've got our happy planner notes here we're using a hundred GSM paper and the paper is moderately thick um, again we're using the same pencils the same process and the typo pencil is obviously really struggling a little bit um, it just leaves a lot of lines in the paper again we're not using a lot of water and I've come to expect that the paper for Happy Planner pulls quite a bit. It's a bit annoying how it rips up the paper. And here you can see the Typo Pencil is not blending. The Faber-Castell is not blending as well as it has in other papers. And the DeWent also is not blending as well as it has in the other papers. It's taking quite a bit of extra water to get it blending. The Primer market, Marketing Pencil has obviously done the best so far, so I would say that if you're going to be using watercolor pencils in your notebook, then um, you should be using your Primer Marketing Pencils. Here I'm using just another different colored Primer Pencil, just to see if it is actually the pigment in the pencil or if I just got lucky with that one, but no, it blends beautifully. Here I was using a very pastel color, it's almost white, I don't know why I bothered using it, because you can't see it on the video, silly me, but it is equally as pigmented and it's really bright as well when you actually zoom up to the paper if you are gonna be using it as an overlay on something else. So what I highly recommend is the Primer Marketing Pencils. I'm giving them a 10 out of 10 for blendability and also not using too much water to be able to blend on the paper. Here you can see once dry, it has crinkled just a little bit on these as well. As always, thank you so much for joining us. I had so much fun doing this spread and I'm looking forward to adding a whole bunch more into it. I'm gonna be adding Myers-Briggs and a variety of other personality traits into it. So follow along to see how that turns out. See you next time.